everyone. Um, today we are here at the allotment garden and I'm going to give you a quick tour through and give you a little bit of an update that happened very unfortunate due to a little bit of a mishap with this gate here. It wasn't me. And I'll show you the update on, on the unfortunately eaten vegetables. I'm here at a lot, um, allotment community garden in Barrington, Rhode Island, plot 2B. And I'll show you um, what happened this weekend. Um, I was the first one to plant up my garden this year. And so I have the tallest brassicas. Um, and we all know deer love things like brassicas. They love things like, what else? Um, pastas. Um, they eat a lot of our big leafy green things um, in our garden at home as well. And to be honest, I didn't wasn't 100% sure this had been uh, deer damage until I really thought about it. And I saw the, I thought about the location of the things that were hurt, the height that things of, that were damaged. And, and then I realized exact, it's exactly what they do um, at our house, which is just up the way, which means it's the same GD deer, um, that are, <laughs> that havoc this area that do right up the way to where the backyard garden is located. So let me show you and give you a little tour of the brassicas first, and then I'll give you a tour of the rest of this little plot we have here. Noise in the background, that is a kill deer bird. I'll see if I can show you later. So these are my shorter brassicas. My red cabbages are looking beautiful. They were untouched. You can see this is a purple cauliflower. So it was nice and tall. Uh, it was nicely eaten. Potentially, since I hadn't headed up, I'm gonna leave it there. This, however, was a broccoli and the head is gone. So I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to leave it there. Because it's going to be, it was one of the things I was going to take out anyway, I am going to leave it for now. This is one of the other ones. This was a Brunswick cabbage. Um, hadn't had it up yet. I am going to leave it. This is one of the only ones of this left. The other one actually is coming back okay. Um, these are one of the ones that was taken um, over before. Uh, this one isn't as far headed up. This is a red and green cabbage. And I will leave the um, exact varieties below. Um, this is a, um, a Brunswick, did fine. Um, cauliflower eaten. Green and red cabbage, fine. Broccoli half eaten. This is one of the other ones. You can see that it is a um, this is, that's a cauliflower, I believe, and this is another of the red and green cabbage. You can see this is the one that was most devastated, but as you can see in the center there, it's okay. The head is okay. I'm going to leave it and see what happens. I'm most devastated by the broccoli. This was my biggest head of head. It was almost things to the point where I would be able to harvest it in a week or two. So that's why it's really sad. Um, this was another cauliflower. Again, I'm going to leave these just to see what happens. Um, and here is the only head of broccoli that is left. And I don't know, this is the only one. We'll see how much damage it got in comparison, how it will do. Um, and this one was the other large one. And so all the giant leaves are gone and the head of broccoli in the center is gone. <laughs> homemade, bro homegrown broccoli is crazy delicious and it's very sad. Again, cauliflower, 
And then I believe these were Romanescos here. Um, so we'll see how they're, they're still doing okay. I'm gonna leave these guys here. They were a little eaten on the outside leaves, but not too bad. So we're gonna leave them. So really it's a bro uh, broccoli deer problem. Um, and you know, the thing is, is that we would be taking out the broccoli ones anyway, leaving more room for the cabbages. So we're just gonna see what happens in the next couple of weeks um, and go from there. As you can see, the damage isn't 100%. It's more like, well, shit. It's like a good swear session kind of a, a feeling about, about those broccoli because it's like, you know what? Those were my best looking pieces. Of course you liked those. Um, so I, Oh, they also ate the Calibos cabbage, which are the ones I ordered from Ireland, from Cetaholic. They're like the pointy ones, pointy red ones that um, Charles Dowding grows. And I really liked the variety when I saw that, that he had them. And so that's why I chose them. Um, we'll be growing more for fall. So in their place, I put in three zucchinis. I'm not 100% sure of their exact variety since I bought them from a roadside stand, unfortunately. Um, so them and some peppers, I won't really know too much about, but everything else I am very familiar with the varieties and will be able to share more with you as they grow their fruits, um, and get bigger throughout the season. Along this trellis here, we have our Beauregard peas. These are row seven peas. These are purple potted peas that stay purple when you cook them. So no flowers yet but the tendrils are hanging on to that trellis really well, really gorgeous in there. See that? So pretty. And these guys have grown approximately eight inches in the last week, and I expect them to probably do even as much over the next week. It's nice and cool this week, which will help them um, along their journey. I think at the far end here, ooh, that has out of exposure. We are looking at Celosia here um, are the little flowers in here. We have two varieties. You can see some of them were eaten probably by insects, not by deer. Um, the reddish ones, like that one, um, are the pink flamingo and the bright yellow ones are the mixed coxcomb kind. So we have some flowers on this end and a couple more in the middle over here along the edge. And then this row of flowers in here is calendula, just to kind of give a little bit of something between the uh, brassicas and the nightshades being our um, three tomatoes and a couple of peppers here. Now you're not really supposed to pep plant them, but um, this year's garden arrangement was 100% based off of a row cover, being able to fit over these brassicas here since they didn't have a full fleece and I needed them that day. As we head around the other side of the garden, we have three tomatoes. These are all three cherry tomatoes here. I believe we have um, some jasper and black. I think these are both black tomatoes, black vernissage, and this is a white cherry actually. Uh, my white cherries are doing the worst they have from the moment they germinated. In here, I did plant a couple of peppers where there were spaces from other things that had been devastated by the deer. And we also have some other peppers all in here. I'll be making a chart of all of the peppers that we planted and all of the everything. You can see I need to spend some time weeding here this week pretty extensively. Um, we then go into our kale section and you can see it really needs weeding. Kale, Swiss chard, and our onions. And I believe it goes shallot, uh, no, it goes, <laughs> we have shallots, we have yellow onions, we have red onions, and we have um, bunching Tokyo um, green onions. So we'll see how that goes. Coming along here, between all the weeds, you can see some fluffiness here. 
these are flowers. These are dill florist flowers. So they are those big giant things of dill that you'd see in floral, floral arrangements. Very excited to see what happens with those. They have tripled in size in the last couple of weeks. These were grown from seed. Um, these here are Feverfew that I purchased. I did not find Feverfew in time, so these were purchased. Same with these little Gumfrina patch I have up here next to the rest of the peppers. Um, and as we come into our tomato section here, we have all sorts of tomatoes. The smaller one here is a black crim, and the rest are cherry tomatoes. Um, and again, I have a chart, which I'll be working on for the blog in the next couple of weeks. Um, this tomato is the only one I lost out of this garden. And this was a uh, leftover from a fellow um, community garden plot. They had a lovely uh, green zebra, which um, I was able to uh, use. And you can see theirs has a bud on it there. So very appreciative. And this one, I, I don't know what it is. This is a volunteer and it was just kind of perfectly placed. So I left it. Um, as we come into the end here, this is the rest of the flower patch for the community garden. And more of the celosia are all in this end. You can see they weren't hurt as much by insects or birds or whatever, probably because of this nice trellis. And then we have our sweet pea trellis here, which won't be tall enough for them, but it'll get them started in their journey up. So also on each end here, there are some Mexican sour gherkins, aka cucamelons, on the ends. You can see, sort of, that they have been eaten quite a bit, but they are there. So they are there and they're starting, and the sweet peas have been pinched out. They're getting nice and bushy and they're coming back, and you can see in a couple of places that they've been pinched out. They're looking great. Sort of see in here that they some of these have been pinched out and they've been shooting up more growth as they do that. And there's still lots of weeds that we're going to be taking care of um, in the next couple of days after my next deadline for the graphic design studio. So that's mostly the veg patch. There's a couple of eggplants here on the side, but again, I need to pull out my chart to tell you which ones I planted over here. Pretty sure one of them is the um, long and um, Thai ones um, for this one. But again, I'm gonna have to get out my chart. Um, and I have a lot of weeding to do when it warms up just a little bit more. Again, I will be able to spend some time out here um, and hopefully um, make some decisions about which eggplants get to stay and which ones have to go. Um, one thing I need to do is to get these flea beetles off of my GD eggplant leaves. Look at those flea beetles. I can show you where the damage is. It's basically like perforated paper. Yeah. See? No, this variety of eggplant is not spotted. Those are holes. So I can get this one for you. There you go. Here's a really good angle. You can see holes. I just took out a bunch of little guys out of the center there. So. I'm gonna go find something that's organic, certi organically certified for the organic garden here and murder them. You can see the rest of the garden is really shaping up. This section here has been zoned off for a kill deer. Kind of looks like a piping clover. You can see him. Maybe if I can zoom in all the way. Um, right on the bottom left hand corner of that bed there that's covered in green, a little gray dot. That's him. The rest of the garden's looking good. Everyone has to have started their garden and finished all of their mulching of all of the paths next to their gardens by last weekend. So everything is looking quite beautiful in here and with so much potential. And that's the best part. The potential is really the cool part. It's the cool part of gardening in general. Um, I'll show you a couple of really, really great looking gardens. We'll start behind me. This is the raspberry patch, by the way. Yes, I'm extremely happy I'm right next to the raspberry patch. Okay. This is a tap-in bed, and tap-in is for a 
organization that does a lot of um, giving away food um, for local people in need. So you can see they have basil and herbs and lots of tomatoes and whatnot. Um, this is one of the less planted tap-in beds of areas around here. My neighbors, unfortunately, her, I'm gonna have to let her know that her stuff has also been eaten. She'll be very sad. She's actually on the board, so probably will help us keep the door closed. Um, looks like all of her lettuces were also deer eaten and her cavalonero are completely gone. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, she has such a lovely little way that she gardens. A lot of people do, it's very interesting in that they have a lot of like using edges for onions and things like that. I like the methodology and the design. Uh, her peas are the most tenderly peas I have almost ever seen. I mean, is that not a beautiful sight or what? Okay. Heading up, you can see her lovely tomato plants, Swiss chard, and other greens at the end, and her garlic patch. Oh, there we go. So I didn't just see that the camera wasn't looking over that way. Looking beautiful. And this is Kim's garden. It's also one of the people in charge around here. She has this wonderful green line here for lettuces and then um, a line of some sort of beans. And she has onions planted all around her squashes. And not, oh, it looks like she has her Brussels sprouts in the ground already, which makes me feel like I need to get mine started ASAP. Then she's got this wonderful row of peppers here. Wow, have her peppers done better than mine. Holy crap. More beans. And her tomatoes are safely nestled inside of this amazing contraption. I mean, amazing. And she has lots of cayenne peppers, onions, and clearly she knows what she's doing. Neighbor Waffles Garden. She has lots and lots of peas. She uses the, um, the edging for her trellis, which is smart. I'm hoping to take my, my edge down, but maybe I won't with the potential of deers coming in. Lots of cabbages and greens. Those are her favorite things and her amazing oregano plant. I actually have her garden from last year. You only get one of the plots that you had the year before, definitely. Um, so this was her plot and then she, as her second one, uses this one. Now a lot of the people around here have two. Um, I don't know how many years that will be feasible, but we'll find out. The most ridiculous looking dandelion I've ever seen. It's like three feet wide. I believe this is a tap-in bed. So more of, but I'm not 100% sure. They have some lovely Spaghetti squash, straight neck crook squash, blue hubbard pumpkins, lots of peppers and tomatoes. Very sparsely spread out, but they have quite a few larger creepy crawlers. I'll see here, probably as close as I'd want to get to this guy. So the poor person lost right in the center of the screen. That is the nesting bird. So, let's head away from them. Lots of tomatoes. Not much in this garden. Not sure if the person's going to use it or not. This person's half done with their chicken wire. Lots of tomatoes and eggplants here. Some potatoes and tomatoes, it looks like here. Then we have a wonderful community area here. I'm sure we're going to be very happy about on hot summer days. The amazing rhubarb patch. Yes, that's all rhubarb. And there are going to be sunflowers all here. There are blueberry plants all along this back wall here, which are still very young, not in 
edible shape yet, maybe two to three, if not four years from now, if the birds don't eat them first. Obviously, it'll be quite a while before these grapes also shape up to be <laughs> an edible size. Basically, this is the biggest rhubarb plants I've ever seen. They come up to my waist, so it's clear. We have wonderful free compost and mulch over here, which is crazy helpful um, because, well, it's expensive. It's one of the most expensive parts of gardening. These are free from the Johnson Landfill here in Rhode Island. Um, and they do some organic composting and tree services and whatnot. So they, um, the town helps provide it to the state landfill. Um, and they help provide it to our commu town community garden. Got lots of cabbages, kale, different things like that in this garden. Not sure this person has weeded yet. I'm sure they will. Um, this person has lots of peppers going out that they've started and done some pretty serious slug or beetle contraptions here for their eggplants and tomatoes along that end. You can see lots of tomatoes, squash, greens, etc. This is one of um, the other friends I made the other day. She did a great job in this garden. Tons of eggplants. Cauliflower, maybe? I think she said she's always had a hard time with cauliflower, but it's going to try again. Tomatoes and squash in the end. So you can see how having two plots would be really wonderful. She has leeks and garlic in this one, peas, kale, and magically her, her, um, well, I have red cabbage as well. They didn't really touch the cabbage as much as they touched the kale and the broccoli. And she has these radishes that are closer than mine are to being ready. I'm very jealous about. It's full sun here. The radishes are at home. The full sun is amazing here. Um, this is the tap-in bed, lots of tomatoes, and we have no need to be barricaded off from bunnies and deer here that don't really touch those. And we have more tapping beds, lots of peas, lots of onions, lots of weeds, as is this time of year. Sort of finish up the tour. Oh, we have camera malfunction. We have some garlic over here. Um, on this end, we have some, um, almost an entire bed of peppers. You can see somebody here has some perennial asparagus that they are working on. Getting established, these crowns, a couple of crowns. I think they're like three or four crowns here. Um, so, you can see that? So, they'll get bigger over the next couple of years. And I think there's even a pepper in one of those plants over there. They must have bought them with a pepper already. Um, this, I don't know whose garden this is. Looks like lots of onions. Some really, really neat gardeners here. I am nowhere near as neat and tidy as many of these lovely people are. Some greens, lots of flea beetles, or slugs on this one probably actually garlic and beans mixed in together, which is an interesting combo. And I'm not exactly 100% sure what they planted here, but um, this family is here all together and they work on it all together. So it'd be lovely to see that grow into something over the season. Last section we have here is a giant thing of peas in the middle of this garden. And they have a huge, asparagus patch on this end, which is just lovely. You can see they have three rows of crowns of asparagus. One, two, three here. Um, I don't know how long they've been here, but it looks like they're probably large enough to be able to harvest. And very clearly this person loves peas. Most likely, this is that second garden for this person, since they have the same fencing and edging. Yes, you can see how two gardens would be lovely. And they are probably getting, looks like beets are in here, been sown, and they're going to finish up the rest soon. 
That is some broad beans here. Let's see. Um, we are quite a bit behind England and whatnot. Broad beans are like in full production over there. Here in the end of Ju end of May, going into June. It is uh, just cool enough more than them, even though we have similar summer um, heat, a little bit hotter and a little bit colder than them. You can see the flowers are starting to form on some of these broad beans. So beautiful. This is a uh, broccoli rub that has gone to flower. You can definitely eat these. I really like these in salads, in fact. They're very kind of interesting tasting. Hard to describe. Um, you can see there are some interesting sticks here, probably for pest control in some fashion. And some more garlic or onions. Lots of fennel in this one, which will be very beautiful. And they have some sun damage just like I do on their tomatoes. Mine were completely hardened off like they're supposed to be. And then for plunk, a little fried. Lots over here in this garden. Come on, buddy. Tons of peppers and tons of tomatoes. And then most likely this is their second plot and it's all squash. You can kind of tell based off of how they've mulched and how they're using it. You can tell this person has two as well because they're both straw mulched and they're different. They're very similarly the same lettuce. Um, I think it's moderately unfortunate that so many people have two. Um, yeah, let's stand to that. Won't say anything else. Um, and you can see lots of kale. Now it's funny, they didn't eat any of this kale. Very interesting that they didn't eat this, this cavalonero. But boy, do they eat Bonnie's cavalonero. Sorry, I think my other brassicas brought them over, over to that bed, Bonnie. I apologize. Have you ever watched this? Probably not. And then we have lots of Swiss chard, looks like, and tons of beets. Spinach in this guy. Good season for spinach. It's been like warm and sunny, but not too hot. This person didn't quite finish getting all of their uh, wood chips spread around theirs, but they got their tomatoes in and that's really what matters in the end. And we are back over to my section where we've seen Kim's lovely contraption of beds. So it'll be really interesting to see how this place grows and changes. Um, as you guys know, this is truly the second bed that we're using and I put a little bit of everything in here in case the deer eat everything at the um, at the home garden. We have a potential for getting something out of it here. Some flowers, some greens, some peas. We don't have peas at the home garden. Um, we have one cabbage over there. We'll see if they eat that today this afternoon. And um, eggplants and peppers, tomatoes, etc. Anyway, time to get some weeding done in the next week. And it also, it looks like even though we had some early tomato damage, it was on the early leaves. And you can just see how beautiful this is filling out and has a couple of buds right on there. Can you see that? Beautiful buds in there. So. So that is our first tour. It's our first tour of the community garden for this season. It is just after Memorial Day here in New England, in Rhode Island. We are technically where this is. This is a 6B zone. Um, and um, that is where we garden in 6B. Um, it's right on the edge of being 6 and 7 um, because of temperate weather. And uh, because of that, we're a little bit more temperate than other parts of Rhode Island and other parts of like Massachusetts goes into zone five pretty quickly up near Worcester. Um, but we stay nice and temperate for being in New England here. Um, a little more, more temperate than parts of Southern New York and Connecticut just because of the ocean. Um, meaning we stay a little cooler and get um, stay a little warmer um, in the winter time. In 
the summertime when you drive from my house a couple of miles north of here. Um, technically I'm not a Barrington resident but my family is and it's our plot together and we do the work together here. Um, where I live it used to be where I go to the pool in the summertime as a kid and the distance between our house around the corner from here to there would be approximately five degrees warmer so we'd always know that whether or not we wanted to bring a jacket or whether or not we were going to want to go swimming that afternoon at the pool at the country club. So um, I will leave you guys there. Um, make sure to subscribe for the following our backyard garden, the loft garden, and here at the community allotment garden um, for updates all season long.